Okay, welcome to our next topic on the application of the derivative. We don't have too many topics left, um, but this is an important one. Um, and we look at this in the second semester as well when we come back and we kind of work backwards, like we'll start with the acceleration and we'll work backwards. Um, in, this, in this section, what we're looking at is the position function, which is given to us as being s of t. And this is the position function as it moves on a coordinate plane. Um, so it could be moving left or it could be moving right. We'll draw a little like kind of snaky type graph to show where, where, what's going. It's called it moving in rectilinear motion. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, and it's the coordinate plane or the coordinate point p is moving on this plane so that the position s of t is given to you at any given time as some sort of function. So the velocity of p is going to be the derivative. We write it as v of t, velocity of the, uh, uh, over time, is the first derivative of the position function. The speed of p is the absolute value of the velocity, so it doesn't matter if it's moving left or right. Whether the velocity is negative or, where it's le or positive, it determines if it's moving left or right. So when the velocity is going to be negative, it's moving left, and when the velocity is positive, it's moving right. And then the acceleration of the position function of p is given as a of t, is the derivative of the velocity, which is the second derivative of the position function. Um, we'll be working with this stuff both uh, first semester and second semester. Um, it's a very important concept. It's not too hard. Uh, I will do a short example for you, but that's, that's about it here. So what we're going to look at is we're going to be taking a look at the position function s is given to you um, as going to be s of t equal, equals t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 20. Um, and we want to describe what's going on with p during the time period. Oh, there's another typo. <laughs> from negative 1 up to 9. So um, in this time frame, or in this time period, the first thing I want to do is look at the velocity. So the velocity v of t is given as the derivative of the position function, which is going to be 3t squared minus 24t plus 36. And then I can also identify what the acceleration is. The acceleration of the function is going to be 6t minus uh, 24. Um, what I can do is I can I can find if I take the uh, go back to the velocity if I set this equal to zero and I were to solve it I can solve it by factoring or graphing or whatever I find that um, it's going to have a change of directions at t equals two and t equals six and um, since I find that it's happening at t equals two and t equals six I really want to take a I want to describe what's happening with this graph on three different intervals. I want to describe from negative 1 up to positive 2, and then 2 up to 6, and then 6 up to 9. And this is where sometimes um, we'll use a little bit of a, um, you know, we'll use a coordinate plane or we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, like, what's going on to uh, draw a little snake graph and we can, we can get the original position function. Um, at these different things. So um, it, it, you just want to determine whether it's moving to the left or moving to the right. You can use a test value. So for instance, if I set up a little table of values or a little chart here, what I can do is um, I, I'll, I'll let my time interval, this is my time interval. Um, let's get a k value. That's my test value. And which is the, the test value is v of k. And then the sine, positive or negative, of v of k. And then that's going to tell me the direction, left or right. So let's say on that first interval from negative 1 to 2, a good test value to use would be 0. If I plug 0, if I plug 0 right here into my derivative, I get positive 36. So the sine of v of k is positive, so that's going to tell me that I'm moving to the right. On the interval from 2 to 6, I went ahead and used 3, and if I plug 3 in there, um, this is going to be 27 uh, minus 72 plus 36. I don't need to know exactly what that exact value is, I just need to know it's negative. And that's going to tell me that my particle is moving to the left. And then on the last interval, I used 7. And uh, I found that test value to be 15. Um, and so I, I find that to be positive. And that means I'm moving back to the right. The acceleration 
it doesn't really tell us much about the particle in terms of moving left and right. Um, it's going to tell us where it's, um, you know, the speed is getting greater, the speed is getting less. Uh, and they will use some speed. You will see some of that every once in a while. Um, this would tell me right here, um, my second derivative is kind of the maximum or the minimum value of what the velocity is going to be. So if I'm trying to find a, a maximum or minimum of the velocity, depending upon what this graph looks like, in this case it's going to be a, a minimum. I would set that equal to zero, and at four seconds I would have a minimum velocity. So um, that's, that's all, that can be useful oftentimes, and um, you get some problems like that. So there you go, little little velocity acceleration. Really, the harder part just becomes on taking the derivative and finding these signs and crunching numbers and stuff like that. If you can graph it, definitely graph it on your calculator.